Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, we're going to cover mining and extracting gemstones in the Grey Cat Rock mining vehicle, as well as its slightly larger sibling, the Grey Cat Rock DS. So stick around to learn everything you need to know about ground mining in a Grey Cat vehicle. I've broken the video timeline up into chapters, so check the description for specific timestamps or hover over the progress bar to skip ahead. So let's get started. The Greycat Rock is a single seat ground vehicle designed to mine larger gemstone deposits. It uses a size zero mining laser and has 0.8 SCU of internal storage. The mining laser can be operated from the driver's seat and includes both a fracturing and extraction mode. You can buy the Grey Cat Rock from New Deal in Lorville for 172,000 UEC, or purchase it through the Pledge Store for 55 US dollars. The Grey Cat Rock DS is a dual seat variant serving the same purpose. However, the mining and driving functions are managed in separate seats on the vehicle. It also uses a size zero mining laser, but has a larger storage capacity, handling two SCU of cargo space. The driver's seat is in an environmentally sealed cabin in the core of the vehicle chassis, while the laser operator seat sits on the deployable laser arm. You can also buy the Grey Cat Rock DS from New Deal in Lorville for 176,500 UEC, or purchase it through the Pledge Store for 75 US dollars. Since both vehicles are rather affordable using in-game currency, I would recommend against pledging for these vehicles directly. Instead, pledging for a transport ship and then earning either mining vehicle in-game. Don't forget to use my referral code in the description below if you are creating a new account. While the size zero power plant and shields can be changed, the performance of other components in this size range is identical, so there's no current benefit in swapping them out. The size zero laser head also shows that it can be swapped out, but there aren't any other mining heads available to purchase in this size range as of Alpha 3.14. I expect to see more options become available in future releases, so check the pinned comment below in case I've published an update video. There is some additional equipment you should consider bringing along on your rock mining expedition. First is a spaceship that's capable of transporting whichever ground vehicle you expect to use. While you can travel using only the ground vehicles, you get a lot more options when you have a toy hauler to pack it up with. The rock fits inside a MISC Freelancer or Drake Cutlass Black although the Rock DS needs to be hauled in a larger ship, like an RSI Constellation or an Anvil Valkyrie. And second is an environmental suit. Like I mentioned in the Grey Cat Multi-Tool video, some planet surfaces will be either extremely hot or extremely cold, and these are highlighted in red and blue on the gemstone's location table. Your standard spacesuits have a limited temperature range they can be used in, but you can purchase either the Caldera Pembroke undersuit and helmet combination for extreme heat, or the Caldera Novikov undersuit and helmet combination for extreme cold. You can buy one of these armor sets at the refinery stations for around 15,000 UEC, and it will be appropriate to the climates of the nearest planet and moons. These environmental suits will be required when operating the Grey Cat Rock, or if you're on the laser turret of the Rock DS. You cannot retrieve these vehicles from the spaceport, since there's typically no accessible driving paths out of the hangar. So don't be alarmed if your rock doesn't appear on the list of vehicles at the ASOP terminal. In order to retrieve your rock or rock DS, you'll need to go to a ground entrance in one of the major cities or a Platinum Bay building at one of the many outposts around the verse. Mining outposts are a great place to pull vehicles. Just look for the two small pads with the blue logo painted on them and head to the nearby Platinum Bay building to access the ground vehicle retrieval terminal. Once your vehicle has been retrieved, you can choose to either load it into the back of a spaceship to transport it, or set out across the planet's surface to look for mineable deposits. As a helpful tip, if you store a spaceship that's carrying a rock vehicle in the cargo bay, the rock will appear there again the next time the spaceship is retrieved. If you choose to forego the transport ship, try to get it far enough away from the outposts that you won't draw the attention of other players. When rock mining, I always fly at least 60 kilometers from the nearest point of interest before starting to look for mineable deposits. However, if you're traveling across the planet's surface in the rock, you could start searching after about 20 kilometers, since it'll be more difficult to detect in the small ground vehicles. Seriously, if you haven't picked up on it yet, you should be cautious around other players when mining, 
While the majority of Star Citizen players range from friendly to casually disinterested, there are a subset of players who make it a point to grief other players at every opportunity they have. Don't make yourself an easy target. Like and subscribe now if you're enjoying this video, and leave a comment below if you notice anything that isn't clear or might have changed in future versions. Now that we've got our rock, or our rock DS, we're ready to start surveying for mineable gemstones. This table shows which locations have each material, as well as highlighting the best locations if you're looking for something specific. Locations in red will require an undersuit for extreme heat, and those in blue will require an undersuit for extreme cold. Because Hadonite's the most profitable, it makes sense to go where you'll have the best chances of finding it. The best plan for finding rock mineables is to get a decent starting location away from other points of interest and just start flying in one direction using your scanner ping to try and catch a nearby signal. I like to use the OM1 or OM2 orbital markers to start since they sit just above the north and south poles of the planet. So that way, you'll always be able to travel to the day side of the planet. Mining in the dark is slightly inconvenient, but most of all it can be kind of scary. When you start flying, Keep yourself at SCM speeds or below, and fly within about 100 meters of the planet's surface. You can choose to lock ping controls to scanning mode only, or unlock them so that they're available in any mode, which will allow you to send out a radar ping even when you aren't in scanning mode. You can toggle this setting in the General Settings tab, but beware that your key binding may interfere with the fire button, and you could send out random pings when you don't intend to. Adjust your radar ping key binding in the Flight-Radar section in the Advanced Keybinds to prevent this. I have a dedicated button on my joystick for the radar ping, and have it set as unlocked so that I can ping whenever I want. Most of the signals you detect will be from large ore deposits that the rock won't be able to do anything with, and these will appear at distances of between 5 to 10 kilometers. The smaller gemstone deposits can only be detected within a few hundred meters. So if you get a new signal at less than one kilometer distance that wasn't there before, it's likely a mineable gemstone deposit. Move towards the signal until it resolves, and anything that appears with a diamond icon can be mined with the rock or rock DS. For the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you're mining in the single seat rock, but the same concepts apply to the rock DS. After you've located a gemstone deposit, Check how many rocks are in the cluster, and use your ship's scanner to identify which type of gemstone the deposit includes. You can activate scanning mode by pressing the V key, aim your crosshairs at the rocks that you want to scan, and hold the left click until you see the scanning indicator. This should identify what material you found, along with the mass, instability, and resistance of the rock. Clusters of gemstone deposits will all spawn with the same rock type so you only need to scan one rock in a cluster to determine what they are all going to be. If you're having difficulty scanning the rock, you can identify them by sight because the different gemstone types have distinct colors. Hadonite deposits are pink, aphrodite is blue, and dolavine is green. You can see a side-by-side -side example of these colors in the display cases at any of the refinery stations. Any amount of hadonite is worth stopping for, however, I prefer to have at least three rocks in a cluster for other materials in order to make it worth the time of unloading, harvesting, and restarting your search. Now it's time to start mining. Check my previous video on the actual process of mining since it's going to work the same regardless of what type of mining equipment you're using. In the Grey Cat Rock, you activate mining mode by pressing M, which will open the mining interface and extend the mining laser arm. In the Rock DS, you need to enter the laser turret operator seat and use your interact mode to find the power on button, which extends the mining laser arm and powers on the mining laser, which defaults to mining mode. Gemstone deposits mined by the Grey Cat Rock only have to be fractured once, leaving behind the individual gemstones that can then be scooped up with the extraction laser. Switch to the extraction laser by right clicking, aim at the gemstones on the ground, and then left click to activate the extraction beam. It may take a few seconds for rocks to start being collected, which can vary based on game server performance. As the materials are collected, you'll see them appear on the vehicle cargo display. If you are mining multiple rocks in a cluster, it can be more efficient to break them all first, and then extract the fragments afterwards in one go. However, 
If you overcharge any of the rocks while mining, any of the gemstones that are already waiting on the ground to be collected will be scattered. I've had my fair share of seemingly endless extraction runs because I put just a little too much energy into that one final rock. Once your rock inventory is full, it's time to start transferring the materials. You can sell the collected materials directly from the rock inventory, but that would require frequent trips back to the mining outposts or admin terminals. It's best to transfer materials while you're still out in the field, giving yourself a longer mining session between downtimes. To do this, you can interact with the small cargo port on the rear of the rock and move the material in one of two ways. The first and most efficient method is to park the rock inside a player-owned ship and move all of your collected gemstones out of the rock and into the ship's inventory. While parked inside a player-owned ship, exit the rock and move towards the cargo container at the rear of the vehicle. Interact with the cargo container to open the inventory management interface. Then, select the ship inventory on one panel with the rock inventory on the other panel. With both inventory panels open, simply drag and drop the collected gemstones from the rock inventory into the ship inventory. This frees up your rock inventory to continue mining, allowing for extended mining sessions. The second method is less efficient, but can be done anywhere. Using this method, materials can be transferred from your rock directly into your personal inventory. That is, the storage space available in your backpack or any space granted by your armor. Interact with the cargo container on the rock to pull up the inventory manager, where you can move items between the rock cargo space to your armor or backpack cargo space. You might need to split the material into smaller stacks in order for it to fit inside the relatively limited personal storage space in your armor. You can then walk back inside a player-owned ship and store the gemstones in the ship inventory using the same method mentioned above, or sell to a terminal directly from your personal storage. This method is a lot more time consuming and will probably take multiple trips to unload a full rock, but it can be useful if your vehicle ever breaks down in the field and you might lose the material anyways. With your mining expedition completed, it's now time to find a place to sell your collected gemstones. Most mining outposts will have a trade terminal that will purchase gemstones. Simply land on one of the pads or near the buildings, locate the building that's marked as storage with the yellow light above, and approach the trade terminal inside to sell. The materials will show up under whichever ship they were transported in, or on your personal inventory. You can also sell gemstones at any admin terminal in a space station or city. Gemstone sales prices are not affected by trade demand signals, so you will always be able to earn the same amount of revenue regardless of where you choose to sell. And there you have it. Everything you need to know about mining in the Grey Cat Rock and Rock DS. Now get out there and start breaking rocks and leave a comment below letting me know how your first few mining runs go. Next up, we take a look at the MISC Prospector, a solo mining spaceship with a flexible loadout and great earning potential. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and check the pinned comment on this video for any corrections or additional detail. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord by following the links in the description. And last of all, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because you know deep down, you'll feel better about yourself having done it.